Right, let's cover VXLAN policy-based routing or PBR. This is the agenda, we'll cover the overview, use cases, details and caveats, configuration, best practices, troubleshooting, and provide a demo at the end. Right, 10.9 will add PBR support for VXLAN deployments. Before that, we have PBR support for non-VXLAN. Okay. So, I'll give you an example. Traffic will normally use the right side to get out to the destination. If you want to, you can have a PBR policy applied inbound on this interface SVI. That, and you can say, I want to redirect traffic from this particular host to this next hop, maybe to a firewall. Right? That's the firewall IP to the 1.2. And that can be done if the firewall is directly connected on the same subnet by L2 VNI20. So this will allow layer 3 VTAPs. It, this has to be a layer 3 VTAP because you need to apply that policy inbound on an SVI. It's done inbound and then you can redirect it. So let's say if it goes on the left to a firewall and the firewall does, does NAT NAT, return traffic will automatically come back here because it uses NAT. But if it doesn't use NAT, you might need another PBR policy for the return traffic to use the left path because it's unidirectional. So just, we basically applied it for the south to north direction, but if you need the north to south, you need another PBR policy. Supported on these three platforms, use cases. You can use it with distributed layer three gateways. So here you see, I've switched two and switched three, it's distributed layer three gateway because they have the same IP address as the default gateway on both of them. And again, this example uses the right-hand side as a normal road. If you want to use the left side, only for certain flows, that's possible. You apply inbound on both your gateways here, switch two and switch three. It can be selective. Right, what is it? I just want to redirect TCP traffic, destination port. All TCP traffic with this destination port, I want to send it to this next hop connected to switch one. All other traffic was to use the right hand side. You can do that. Another example is centralized layer three gateways. Here you can see switch two and switch three are layer two VTAPs. There's no default gateways, so you cannot apply PBR because they're purely L2. So the gateway now is on switch one, right? centralized layer three gateway. You can apply the PBR policy on that SVI inbound. In this example, I just want to redirect UDP traffic from these two sources right, to this next hop. You can see this next hop, 1.2 is actually, it's actually not on the same subnet as the, um, the VMs, because this is a 20 subnet, this is a 21 subnet. So in this case, this is normal PBR actually. It's not, nothing to do with VXLAN, nothing to do with VNIs, but this is possible. So you do need to have a IP and X hop that is directly connected to the switch. All other traffic will continue to use the default route. You just want to inspect traffic, in this use case, UDP traffic from these two source IPs to this firewall device. Details, so like I mentioned, it has to be applied on a layer three VTAP, either centralized layer three gateway or distributed layer three gateways. The policy is applied inbound on an SVI. Your next hop or the PBR next hop has to be over L2 VNI or directly connected interface. You need to have a directly connected ARP entry for the next hop on the layer 3 VTAP. So these are the things that supports the class match, the various combinations you can do. UDP, TCP, source, destination, IP ranges, and DSCP values. You can use it in the default or non-default VRF. Supports both V4 and V6, and supports VSX as well. Specific to the CX10,000, because it has the DPU, Elba uh, data processing unit, right? So you need to have a security policy created in the PSM for traffic to be redirected via PBR because PBR action is done after traffic inspection. If you do not allow security policy, the PSM basically is dropped right? because it's a firewall and therefore it cannot be redirected to the PBR. So you need to allow it in the firewall, but your security policy, your firewall policy on PSM 
allow it, and then it can be redirected in CX. Caveats. So you can see, um, PBR does not support remote routers. It's next hop. You can't do recursive lookup. So your next hop has to be on the directly connected interface. Has to be directly connected network. Right. Next hop, some, um, what's this? So next hop, basically you're just trying to tell you, say, what is the next hop you want, you desire for routing the packet, if it matches. And default next hop, it can be used like a default route to override the system default route if it's already configured. But it also applies if there's no default route. Can use it like an, the XLAN PBR caveats. So you can see as well, there's probing that occurs for these IPs. It occurs every five seconds. So if all the next hops cannot are not reachable because of the probing, the routing table is utilized. So if the first one is not reachable, we'll go offline, inactive. And the second one, hopefully is active, it can be used. If the desire is to drop traffic, when all next hops are reachable, you do need to add interface now. This above example, right? We use the routing table. But this example here, if you add interface now, if you do not meet the next hops, if these two next hops are not active, it will be dropped. If that's the expectation. Next hop has to be learned via ARP on directly connected layer to VNI. It cannot be learned via remote EVPN ARP. So if it's learned via EVPN ARP, it will not work. Configuration wise, this is an example for IPv4. Okay, so basically you need to create your class, your matches. You can state what you want to ignore. If there are any specific IPs you want to ignore, and then you can match on the rest of the subnet. So this is just an example of the destination subnet to this destination. You can add your count as well to check the match. After you create your matches, and your ignores, you want to create a action list. These are basically what is your desired next hop. If you want to have a desired default next hop as well. And then you link them together. What's your class? What's your action? Once that's done, you can apply it to the actual SVI. Apply policy, route it in. So this is the policy that you created here. That's V4. So V6 is very similar. Same thing, create your class but based on IPv6 addresses. Action list will be based on IPv6 next hops. If you link it together, your class will be IPv6. You link both together. And same thing, inbound on the SVI here, you apply it routed in. So you can manipulate the traffic outbound. Best practices, try to add a count. So you can verify if any of those uh, lines have a hit. Troubleshooting wise, always have a topology diagram ready. Right? You need to ensure your IP addresses are stated, your interface details are included. Check the physical cabling and generate show tag when opening a case. So because this is overlay, right? So you do need to check your underlay works before this overlay can actually function. So make sure the underlay network works using a ping trace route. Make sure the loopbacks are reachable. Fix those issues, underlay issues found first before you even proceed with VXLAN PBR. If the underlay is broken, don't even bother with VXLAN at all, right? Fix those problems first. Okay. Once your VXLAN tunnel is up, then, then you can check your VXLAN PBR. So you want to check the configs are correctly configured, you want to make sure they're correctly applied. You want to check your next source reachable. So make sure the ARP entry exists. You want to check the hit counts if any of the traffic hits. Of course, you want to verify that traffic is actually sent to the next hop IP correctly. So refer to the config section for those sample configs for the IPv4 and IPv6. How do you check if they're correctly applied? You can do show PBR summary and see if this next hop is probe, is reachable, your show up as active. 
There's another command, show PBR interface, that shows both active and inactive next hops. You can see five, the probe you couldn't, wasn't reachable, so it's not active, but 10 is active. So that will be used. But show PBR summary only shows the active one. Okay. And how do you check? You want need to ensure up entry is not learned via that um, by EVPN. So this is the command to check. So if that next hop IP is listed here, it will not work. You need to make sure that next hop IP is in the up table by the L2 VNI directly connected and not via EVPN. Okay. So once this is here, it will be active in the show PBR summary. If this above conditions are not seen, you need to resolve them before proceeding any further. Okay. Make sure that the next hop device is actually online, for example. It's actually being, uh, that MAC and IP is being um, learned by ARP. Can show policy hit counts and PBR policy, look at your count matches. Sure. So it should always increase if there's real traffic going through to ensure that it hits. This is for V4 and V6 here. And how do you verify traffic is being sent to the next hop? Well, you might need to do a packet capture, port mirror on the switch. If I, for example, they say the firewall says, I'm not receiving any traffic. So the only way to verify is to mirror this port to a packet capture, a Wireshark. So this is the config to ensure that you are forwarding traffic to this next hop. Okay, with that, let's move on to the demo. And this is um, what I have. I have a distributed layer three gateway, my switch two. This is the default gateway. And I have a host here. Over here, I have switch one. You can see it's just L2 VTAP. There's no distributed layer three gateway. Why? Because if switch one is a distributed layer three gateway and you configure the SVI 20, the ARP entry for this next hop will be learned using EVP and ARP. So if you do that, VXN PBR will not work. So you cannot have distributed gateways on this device connected to your next hop. So that's the main thing. Okay. If you do not configure this, no distributed layer three gateway, this next hop will be learned directly through the L2VNI, through ARP. Okay, so that's the flow, that's, uh, that's the environment. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show a before and after. Right now, I do not have PBR enabled on SVI 20. So if we wire shark this port, if we do pings, we should not see any traffic from this source. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, so this is the host 1.21. This is my wire shark. So let's start capturing. So this is the port I'm capturing, right? I'm generating traffic from this host because there's no PBR on this interface towards the firewall, you shouldn't see any traffic. Into to that des destination some that we're not expecting any response, we're just generating traffic. Let's go here. You don't see any, so it's running live, you don't see any pings from that IP. We do see pings, right? But from a different source, so we're gonna stop it. I see MP, you see the source. This is not this host, 1.21. Okay, so that's without PBR. Let me show you. This is the SVI. Okay. We're gonna attach, we're gonna apply that PBR policy. Add it on. Okay, and now, it's active. Let's start our pings again. It is running. We just let it run. Okay, let's capture the Wireshark. We should see those coming in. You can see now the source ICMP, right? It is coming in from 1.21, which is this device. So we do have PBR running, it's working 
because it's forwarding, it's, it's being captured. Okay, I'm gonna stop it now. Yeah, you can see 1.21 is trying to send to this 200.10. And that's here. 1.21 trying to send to this destination. So we did a packet capture on this port facing this device next hop. Okay, so what can we check to troubleshoot? Let's go back here again. You can see the next hop is active, so it is used. Okay. And let's check hit counts. You should see some hits. You can see 10 on that last line. So this is the policy. As I mentioned, you need to make sure this does not see the next hop. If this sees the next hop, this then your PBR will not work. You should see it in the ARP table via L2 BNI. The next hop is 0 0.6, which is this switch one. Okay, so with that, I think that's it. And I'll hand over to Steve Butler next.